Welcome to Living Better with Chronic Illness with Dr. Larry Berkelhammer. Good morning, Dr. Berkelhammer. Good morning, Phil. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. I read on your website this morning the mention of the placebo effect uh -huh. in the work that you do. Can you tell me what you mean by the placebo effect? Sure. The placebo is basically, if you take, let's say you take an inert sugar pill, yeah. uh, the contents have basically, uh, essentially very little physiological effect on your body. But if you're given this pill, let's say this pill looks identical to a certain pill that's a prescription drug, and you're given this and you're told this is a certain prescription drug. There are countless studies showing that there's a very good chance you will get the same effect as if you took the drug from the drugstore, uh -huh. the real drug. Uh -huh. The mind is that powerful that if we believe something to be true, it becomes true. Physiologically, it becomes true. The active ingredient is a drug secreted by the brain. And the particular drug that's secreted depends on what we believe we're taking. Awesome. So if we believe we're taking a pill that's going to make us happy, we will feel happy after taking it. This reminds me of something else that you mentioned too that I read this morning. You called them ASCs and then you uh, later said altered states of consciousness. Yeah. And I immediately thought, well, this is a... Uh, Acid. Well, that's a psychedelic what, drug. Yeah, that's those. The reason psychedelics were popular is people like the altered state of consciousness. But the reality is, we go into altered states all the time. Without these drugs. For example, you'd be driving down the freeway, yeah. and you've just driven ten miles, and you don't remember anything about the drive. A minute. It seemed like a minute ago you left your house, and now you're arriving at your destination. You got there, you were obviously paying attention, but you couldn't report anything you saw on the way because you were in an altered state. You weren't fully awake to what's going on. The danger of altered states is, I'm sure you've heard of voodoo or yes. faith healing. Yes. Let's take faith healing. Faith healing works. It's been put down. People love to put it down because it's not science. The reality is faith healing works. But what people are mistaken about is why it works. It's not the faith healer who's healing people. It's, again, the mind of the person being healed. It's the drugs being secreted by the brain of the person being healed. So the person being healed goes into this church or wherever it is, and between the music and the visuals and the, the song and the singing, they go into an altered state. They go into a trance, another term for altered state. So then when the faith healer comes along and puts his hands on this person, that's powerful because the person who wants to be healed puts so much faith in the healer, that that degree of faith puts you in an altered state, and I have seen people healed. This is, this is all real, and the, the only problem is that people, people attribute the healing to the healer, and it, the healing has to be attributed to the altered state of consciousness that's found in the healy. Voodoo is the same way. Voodoo works. If you are from a country where they practice voodoo, you grew up with voodoo, you believe in voodoo, someone puts a voodoo curse on you, people have died from voodoo curses, but, but not if they don't believe in it. But if you grew up with that, if you're from one of those countries and you believe in it, voodoo is extremely powerful, but again, the power is in the mind of the person who died. It's not in the mind, the power isn't in the voodoo master, it's in, the power is in the mind of the person affected by the voodoo. You have opened my mind, sir. 
Thank you very much, and we hope to see you again soon. Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome.